from the Accustats Arena at Caesar Southern Indiana. Welcome again to the 2023 Derby City Classic and the 24th edition of the All Around Pocket Billiards Championship. Thank you everybody, thank you so very much. Without question, it's Pool's most exciting and now prestigious event, and it's proudly sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramith Pool Balls. And we also wish to recognize our great two associate sponsors from Outsville and Master Chalk, and once again, the tireless work of Bad Boys Billiards Productions directing this whole event. Thank you very much. And thanks to each and every one of you, whether you're out there watching or you've come to sit here ringside as part of our DCC family. Without you, we don't have a Derby City Classic. I'd like you to give yourselves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. All right, a little quickie background before I do player introductions. 429 players began the one pocket division. There are three players left. None of them have a rebuy. So it means we're going to have a semi-final and a final. John Pinnegar drew the buy. He's going to play the winner of this match for the championship. This is round number 14. And I think it's a testament to the greatness of these two gentlemen and John to have gone through 14 rounds of this killer field and survived it all the way here after also playing nine ball and banks. So that's to all their credit. So let's talk about our two semi-finalists. And first, let's talk about the man from New Orleans, a two-time US Open one-pocket champion, the reigning international one-pocket champion, and a lengthy list of one-pocket titles too long to mention. Sponsored by Game Tight Clothing, Diamond, Digital Pool, and Buffalo Billiards, arguably a top five in the world. Please welcome T-Rex, Tony Chohan. from Angeles City in the Republic of the Philippines. I think we all know an awful lot about this man, and we're honored that we do. We all know that he's a member of the One Pocket Hall of Fame. We know he's a member of the BCA Hall of Fame. And we also know that he holds six Derby City One Pocket titles. Now that in itself is unbelievable, but I want to tell you a couple quick things that are maybe even more unbelievable. He won his first title one pocket in the very first Derby City in 1999 at the Executive West. Okay, so then he took a few years of letting somebody else win and he came back in 2004 and he won four in a row, 04, 05, 06, 07, four consecutive one pocket titles at Derby City. Some guys can't win one. not done. In 2014, and I'm sorry Efren, I'm going to say it, at age 59, he won his sixth Derby City one pocket crown, and should he win today, nine years later, you guys can do the math and figure out how old he is, that would be unbelievable. So Efren, we want to thank you for giving us the pleasure of watching you play here all these years and for all the enjoyment you provide. Sponsored by San Miguel Beer and Puyat Sports, arguably the most famous name in the game, and he is the GOAT. It's the magician, Efren Reyes. I'm going to toss it upstairs to the commentators now. Take it away, gentlemen. Well, thank you, Kenny. And what a match we have here. Our semifinal of the one pocket division of the 2023 DCC Derby City Classic. 429 started. Three left. Uh, looks like Efren's won the lag. It'll be Efren and Tony Shohan. I'm Jeremy Jones. This is AccuStats Production. And a special guest, Scott Frost. How you doing, Scott? And what do you think about this match? Hey, Jeremy, I'm super excited to be here. I, I think it's going to be a great match. Um, history will be made one way or the other. Jonathan Pinnegar, I don't believe, has ever won the one pocket. Tony Chohan has never won the one pocket here at Derby City Classic. And 
our very own Efren Bato Reyes is 68 years old, and that would be an amazing feat in itself if he wins the one pocket. I think it's pretty amazing what he's done already, to be to be fair, uh, win or not, from, from here on out. And, Absolutely. You know, a packed house, and deservedly so, I think it would be packed uh, if Efren was playing marbles on this table here. <laughs> The last day of, of the event, not normal, normally the day we finish the one pocket, but sometimes you got to make some adjustments as we go. And Shohan's still living in the nine ball. Efren's out of the nine ball. So I think we figured it out early. It'd be hard for Efren to win the all-around or maybe impossible without me doing all the numbers. But I think Tony's still in there yeah. with a shot. Tony, Tony was uh, with no losses uh, just just following just prior to this match here, and was up seven to five in, in his match, and ended up losing four games in a row. I know all the players are exhausted, but that's what the Derby's all about, and that's what uh, what we're here to see. See how these guys perform under that steam and under that fatigue. Yeah, it looks like he's going to chop the three. Try to go back. You got to be careful with that shot. I'll tell you, anytime you're upward with the cue ball. Um, and not only that, he could have kind of ran into the balls. Remember that when you're going into the stack, you don't have to coast in there. Usually, you have a little room to to run into them to help you with the cue ball. That's a that's great advice for people at home. When the balls are backed up like they are in the stack, like Jeremy said, you can hit it with a little more speed. You've got a lot more room for error as far as as, as long as you make solid contact, you're really not going to sell anything out. Versus not hitting it hard enough is, is really no good. And this is one guy you don't want banking in his pocket. Well, I think there's an alley to draw the ball kind of safe Ooh, as well. He over... Good call there, too, Jeremy. Yeah, you know, you miss those banks sometimes just because you're playing the cue ball so much. He does did keep that ball on his side, though, which... Which causes some, some concern for Efren, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's not as good as it was a moment ago, but, yeah, it keeps Efren cut off a little bit from going just anywhere with the cue ball. A little See, light again. He didn't go to school, did he? Well... I don't uh, believe the three is the shot here now, and, and maybe it was intentional, unintentional, but intentional to go light there, right? Because he might have still been concerned of the three. Yeah. Yeah, Efren, will, he'll tell you about how he feels about his stroke, how he hits the ball. Pretty, uh, where's his emotion on his sleeve? Doesn't go crazy with it, but <laughs> no, you know. But you can definitely see it, yes. Tony playing the seven and, and resting on top of the six. And four? Yes. Well, getting that extra ball on his side, especially if he can hide it, that would, that would be nice. Yeah, I think that's well done, but I know that Efren's probably going to go up to this seven here and have a lot of blockers. Tony's going to need to manufacture something after this shot. Well, looks pretty good. I think he was concerned about the seven as well. That's why he cut it a little more. Didn't want to leave Tony like a, you know, some type of bank shot with the because the fifteen ten you could play a double up of some sort maybe. Very intelligent shot. Good call there, paying attention to the seven. Yeah, Tony. He's cut off the kick on the ten. They can't get to that. The three's in the way. Really he, hard he, to take an intentional he, really. I mean. No, I agree. I think he can spin to the 10, Jeremy. It's oh, you mean it's through tough. there? Or uh, above the three? Above? No, he couldn't. So he laid him up where he was prior. I'll tell you one thing he did there that may end up helping him is blocking that bank alley on the bottom rail. Now, not this shot. It may not matter, but here in the future it may. I agree, and he's also going to probably, if Efren goes to the 7, he is going to have a, uh, an opportunity to at least get behind the 10 or kick kick one rail behind the 10 at minimum. Yeah, this is important not to leave him off the rail here. He may shoot some type of scramble shot on you. And he's probably worried about leaving that 7 ball like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit anyways. Here's the soft kick on the 10 and why that three ball helps uh, so much. I was actually going to say that. That's a very good call. 
a full inning ahead. Well, he's doing something else, no? I believe he's kicking the 10, but I don't want to call it. I think he is. We'll see. Yeah, he's kicking the 10. He's just paying attention to how he wants to hit it. Ooh. Oof. Is the three bankable now, Jeremy? Just not to make it, right? Uh, Banking it to the 10. Eef. That, that camera view there shows me that's a kiss. Okay. Oh, I agree. Yeah, you see that? we yes, got a I sweet do. camera right there in front of us yes, you know, as we look down. Great setup for the, the booth guys up here this year. Oh, it is. Yeah, the one is probably obvious, I guess. I know you, though. You, you probably would have looked at it a little longer, and that's something that I've learned commentating with you, which I, which I fully agree on. Yeah, he, just, he didn't hit it how he wanted, <laughs> but, you know, Efren... From what I've seen now, this is probably not the case surviving so far. But before, he didn't want to play real long games. You know, it seemed like like he was kind of like smart about it. Knows that he's sure. got a reserve energy, can you know conserve energy, and uh, so and he knows how to press it to where the balls maybe not go up table. So, but but to your, so your point is though that this this week it's kind of been. He, he just takes whatever, right? If, if it goes to the long game, he's playing it. Well, I'm not saying i necessarily seen that. I've got to watch all his matches. I'm just guessing he's had to do that to, to yes. survive this long, you know? Good guess because I watched a couple matches, and you're exactly right. He's, he's definitely played some up-table games, and he's great at it as well. And can he see the three? Obviously, he can. He's trying to make a ball here now. Ooh, he might lose his position here, Jeremy. And that's what I mean. He'll do that sometimes, like uh, run the cue ball, thinking he might make one, get shape. Uh, I, think, I think Tony, he can spin this softly, and this may double kiss to get a little open to take care of the one three. Because that is definitely a problem. Ooh, it was tougher than it looked for us. Yeah. That one, the, the three one could be an issue here. Going up towards the seven again, right? Can he go off the five behind the stack, or the 15's got him cut off, huh? Yeah, the 15, he can't get to the left of the one. Yeah. But I think this creates a problem going up here. I like this shot because I think, to your point, uh, the one three could be a problem. So Tony soft kicks at the 10. Boy, that I just don't like having the three one there at all. How it, bad is the 10 a scratch shot? It's not good. It's it. It's definitely there. It's possible. Yeah. Yes, it is on this on a slicker table like the TV table, which plays great. Tighter pockets this year. Four point two five inch pockets, four and a quarter. But but you really need to be careful on shots like this. It looks like he might be pocketing this ball for him. No, going off the fifteen. Going into the ball first. Not bad. No, I actually like that more than kicking it, right? Now the 10's in a position to where he can kick it again. If he goes up to the 7, meaning Efren, Tony can soft kick the back of the 10. Yeah, that'll that'll get him out of a few things. And after he pockets this 7, <clears throat> things will start to change as far as for Efren. Um, not meaning he can't roll out or whatever, but he won't easily put him up table on a legal hit. So that 5 ball to me, if this 10 gets bumped again and Efren tries to go up table because he can't do anything with the cue ball maybe Tony tries to play off the five to try and I don't know open some balls sure or but the five, go ahead Scott. sorry Jeremy he's got to hit this easy though right he doesn't want to leave Efren some type of a bank towards the three one you see yeah like this like this and going up table with it right Efren could play this two types of ways he could play it to the to the lower long rail or excuse me, the lower short rail, and then to it, two rails, or he could play it one rail, but he didn't want to hit it this hard. He might play the two, but just to get the cue ball <coughs> higher. No. Oh, he hit it bad. I don't I don't believe that he played it that way. Maybe he tried to make the 10. Yeah, but if they played on this table, which Efren certainly has, um, both pockets right at the pocket roll up a little bit. The soft banks just haven't gone all week. you got to be cautious here as well. I, I mean, obviously, I think you've got to make the one. Or maybe I'm incorrect. I mean, Tony yeah. has a shot on the 12. 
I'm not yeah. saying that's easy, but I think he's got to make the one, what right, a, Jeremy? Yeah, what about banking the one and trying to double bank the 10 and, and just kind of stun draw your ball maybe a few inches up? I mean, it's not laying bad to make the one, double bank the 10. Oh, I like that. If it's if it's there. Yeah, even if you do that and move some balls over now, he didn't – I don't think he ever <clears throat> anticipated cutting it that much to where he opened up that 15-14 and all that. No, but he left a bank straight in on the 12. I'm looking at it. He sure did. And funny, Efren kind of practiced this bank a couple times. Let's see if he puts a little more pace on this. Oh, he's looking at the 14. <clears throat> I really like the 12 and just and just stop, right? Or, or draw just a pinch. Yeah, he could do either one. Leave him on top of 14. You don't have to make this bank. Well, even if he's stunned forward, I mean... Not saying that everyone wants to play it that way, and it certainly might give up a shot, but you couldn't blame him if he did it just because he feels sure. like he's going to make the bank. Yeah, I don't think you can blame anything he does. Oh, he, yeah. he, he pocketed this well. So you you got to fault Tony there for not paying attention where that cue ball is going to be. Maybe he just underdrew it, wanted to come up more. I would have probably tried to get up more towards the side pocket, I think, is what he was trying to do. Body movement, body movement. Yeah, and he left the 12 as well. And everything's been the under hit, even when he was practicing. Uh, and what Efren will do sometimes when he feels like that, he'll start just banging the ball real hard, you know, like just hit a few of them dead in the up. face. Yeah, exactly. And he did that a few times and still a little light here. But I'll tell you one thing he's not doing, and I watch this a lot with him because he's so unique. Is he not drawing underneath Why the three? Why wouldn't you draw to the three here, Jeremy? I'm not sure. He's coming up and down for the – Oh, oh he's, he's always got it as well. So he's got to be – He's going able, for the 15. <clears throat> I, I think he was so uncomfortable with the shot that he just wanted to ice Make it. Make it? Yeah, and I, I, nothing worked. Mind you, he just came off of a match. He's had four matches today. Uh, ended at about 2 a.m. last night. First match was at 9 a.m. Next match, 10.30. Next match, 1 p.m. Next match, 3 p.m. And now he's here. So I don't know if the comfort level is there yet. That may leak over to the end rail. That's no, okay. I wonder if he tries to ticky the a three, just shave it coming oh, out. He's great at that. Yeah. He could do it. I oh. thought you were talking about the carom off the three here. Maybe, maybe. This is the one I was talking about there. He was trying to do that to get a bank, or if he catches it thinner, he might get a cut on the 12. Yeah, I definitely like that. That's much higher percentage, but it's not beyond effort to play caroms with position. Oh, no. With speed, too. Right. All right. How do you hit this, Jeremy? With low left, or do you do you just one rail? I don't know. I might I don't know. I might go into the pile here. This is high. And again, the stroke <clears throat> a little light. I think he wanted a lot more in pocket speed there. Give it a better chance of making it. Right. What about chopping this twelve? I know it looks silly, sure. right? But but you clear the three at the same time. Yeah. If you I'll tell you what, <clears throat> if you could Gauge it to go one rail off the three into the pile. I don't think that's possible, but you can get underneath the three here and do some nice things. Yeah. Just slowly putting the 12 over. Yeah. He's shooting your shot. I don't think it's a bad shot considering the game. Oh boy, he's hit it heavy. He got away with that. He hit it much heavier than he wanted. At least I believe he's gotten away with it. I know he can, Efren can probably see a piece of this ball. Yeah, he can, but I don't think there's really much he can do with it, though. Can he get it to the bottom of the eight? I don't think he needs to try that. Yeah, that's four no, balls to nothing, right? There's no cover there at all. So what do you do? Just just come off of the bottom of it? I'd come off the two. Right, me too. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can see it. So he was trying to draw back in the <clears throat> stack. Interesting. Great shot. Fans loved it. You looking at the carom off the off the six? Yeah. Where's cue ball? Yeah, I think I 
think he's got to surrender the cue ball. Even though if he wanted to go up table with this, you know, it's not the worst if he lifts him long straight. and straight. Yeah, because nothing's going to be open there from the stack. Yeah, as long as he doesn't leave a good bank on this seven. As long as he's get to seven to hang or better. He's going three rails. Look at this guy. Oof. Well, look at the cue ball, though. Yeah. Well, I got to admit, Tony's had some opportunities here, though. A lot, actually. Yes. I mean, I say a lot. I mean, He's had two or three good opportunities to, to do some damage. Now the big touch from the big man here. He could try to trap him with that stack the way it is going into the six with the cue ball. Just kind of lag the two. Oh, he's gone short again. Yeah, I don't know. I understand that. I mean, I understand he wanted to play shape, right? But, I mean, I guess he could have got what, four balls. Well, what was your shot, Jeremy? I was thinking just lag it and put him over the uh, six yeah, and, and try and trap him up there with the two <clears> over my pocket to get something started. Maybe he was concerned about Ephraim being able to carry him right off the seven. So maybe. Yeah, but that's why I say put him in the try and put him in the trees sure. over the six, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, make things very difficult. Just ice this, I think. Whatever that may be for you. Yeah, well struck. Very well struck. You know, you got to be in, in Tony's position. I know he's a little, a little under the weather as far as sleep and fatigue. Knowing that Efren's such a fan favorite, does that play a role in, in Tony's thought process or mentality in the match? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think Efren, you know, he's a fan of Efren as well. But I think they played each other several times, you know. Uh-huh. Just kind of like at, you can you can get a little mesmerized by Efren. I used to a little bit to try and play too too uh, too too good. <laughs> Maybe sure. I, I don't know I how was, to explain it. But. Yeah, I get it. I was more so saying just because of the long introduction to Efren and the oh, crowd, yeah. the crowd favorite. I didn't know if that might play a role in Tony, but I don't know that anything's going to bother Tony at this point or Efren. These guys have been playing a lot of pool this week. And he's kind of known for stuff not bothering him too much, Tony. Yes, he is known for it. Trying to hide that seven ball. Not that it's a big deal if it goes up table with a 6-0 lead. 7-0 lead, excuse me. Interesting. I take a foul here probably before I move balls. Now, he's not going to move many, but. Yeah, I agree with you there, Jeremy. That, that does nothing for Tony. And like kicking into those balls or something yeah, like that, take a little foul. Try and boom to the back or maybe even just open them a hair, you know, right. like just an inch or so, <clears throat> something changes. <clears throat> well, that benefits Tony a little that it went on the side, I believe, but he's got a long, long road to climb here. What about the two-railer on the 11 and leave Efren long? See, that was a... That was something I always tried to do, playing Efren, is leave him alone and put the pressure back on him in these situations. You have to create something, I think, with anybody in this game, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I'm not saying that's the shot. This is probably the right shot. Maybe, because it looks like he's left a, a bank and Efren's not even entertaining that bank on the 11. And I don't blame him with a 7 to nothing ball lead, as you mentioned, Jeremy. Now he's peeking at it. Yeah, they're a bit too open to be shooting right now. Let a few more balls get out of play. Yeah. Ooh, there's that carom play from Efren. That's so sweet. Yeah, this got to shoot to seven here and, and double them up on the nine, eight, three, eleven. I think. Yeah, I totally agree. Even if it's not. On, on. I don't, yeah, this one here, don't get me wrong, getting it in play right here, that's fine. Especially if you could hide that five, which he did. Yeah, he, and he, or not the five, the, excuse me, the ball on the spot. He also hit the five, yeah. Though. Now, let's see what Efren decides to do. 
I think it would help Tony's spirit if he can if he can even get back in this game and pocket a few balls if, before he happens to lose the game. Sometimes you need that in order to push you forward. Yeah, just a little time at the table never hurts right. anybody. Would you clip the three here, maybe? I looked. That was the first shot I looked at. This is okay too, though. Yeah, as long as you hit it thin enough. Oof. Still looks a little tentative to me with the stroke, but. You go with the seven here. Looks like the QO might come off that four and open the three eight up. Yeah, that's a tough one to shoot at. He's following it not to mess up the three and the eight. Yeah, he's, he's coming short. You know, Tony, anybody can get uh, a little hypnotized playing Efren just because of. You know, there's a number of reasons why. Sure. Tony's, uh, I don't fear that as much. I think maybe what you said coming off that other match may be a little more of an issue than anything, especially the loss. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. The one I'm concerned about, or not concerned, but curious, is is, uh, is Jonathan Penninger. You know, it will be a big moment for him in the final here. And, you know, I think he would be much more comfortable playing. Uh, I know he beat Efren already. But he would still, in that setting, be more comfortable playing Tony than he would Efren, maybe. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's somebody I, I've been highly impressed of this week. He's just played spectacular. He played a money match upstairs versus Jesus and uh, played, like, almost perfect, I heard. He's played great in the one pocket all week. I heard at one point he played, like, eight matches and lost one game. Yeah. Well, he's a better one-pocket player than giving credit, that's for sure. And Obviously, uh, yes. Yeah. What's he he plays everything well. Is he banking the five? Or is yeah, he, he may be. So Tony's going to probably, well, pretty darn good speed with the cue ball there. That's going to make it tough on the nine, even though it is shootable. <clears throat> yeah, I concur, Jeremy. I think he's got to go with the five here. Yeah, I'll tell you, with the eight-three, the way it is, do you take a chance going into the spot balls with the high right? I mean, it looks like that's high kind right of, or high left. High, high right. High right with a little speed. Yeah, like I mean, you can oh. cross the five and come up the left a little bit, I guess. But uh, I don't mind your shot. He's just playing it over, huh? Oof. Yeah, he was going for the make. That's why I said if you're going to really go for the make, why not just put high right? The way the eight three are and all that, still kind of hard to sell out. To be honest with you. And you're only going to hit the good side of the 11 and 13. And the 5 has a lot better chance to get kicked over with the right English onto the 9, right? Absolutely. Fully. I, I think that was the only way to really play the shot. Especially the score, I'm with saying. With the score, uh, with a 7 nothing lead, I don't think you have much to fear at that point. You just gotta, you've just got to commit and go all out there. You could have done a lot of damage. He doesn't want to hit the spot balls here. Should be well short of that. Oh, he hit it well, actually, if he hits it. Well, here we are again. This is laying a little different, though, Jeremy. Yeah, more kissish. Yeah, a little a little steeper. I think, though, if you're, not, if you're willing to swerve into it, you can still do it. Boy, I don't know what the newer dry cloth. Look at this. He's, what's he doing here? Is he kicking this ball? I, I think he's where... going into it. Oh, that's going to kiss like that. Oh, oh he, he hit it, it with inside and missed a kiss. Yeah. But he missed the kiss coming out. It's, it's maybe we were a little misled by that angle. Yeah. I don't know if Efren's got to take a chance here on the nine, moving the nine and four. I know the five's there, but, man, this is starting to get a little hairy for him. Yeah, and I think this is beneficial for Cho Chohan for sure. He, he definitely needs a couple innings at the table. Like you said, he's come off a, a, a bunch of nine ball matches. You can shoot the seven in these no. balls? No. Are you? He is shooting the seven. Does that tell you how good he well, feels? He might be doing something else. I think he's shooting the seven. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Yeah, I mean, it, it could easily be to where Tony needs two and he needs one uh, soon. <clears throat> he's just got to knock the combination down, which isn't a hanger yet. No, he's got to hold for the bank. The five is going to be going upwards towards the four just a little bit. Well struck. Yeah, very good. Very good. 
And good thing he doesn't have the angle to draw on them balls right there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can you follow it to him? Eesh. I think you're taking a chance of missing the bank. Yeah, oh, what and that's it? what he was trying to do. And that Did he double kiss? Yeah, he double okay. kissed it. That's going to give up game one most likely, and we'll see Tony Shohan break in a moment. Effort leads in game number one, one to nothing. Tony breaks. Effort won the lag. Standing room only here. with his uh, custom pool cue case. Mm -hmm. It's a literally a one butt, one shaft case. He comes to the derby saying, I don't need a jump cue. I don't need a break cue. I'm here to win the one pocket. I brought the same thing. But of really? course I'm not playing in the tournament. I just brought it just to hit some balls. Nice. Yeah, Efren's had a shoulder issue for some years now and when he has to elevate the cue, so he's not trying to jump the ball very often. Yeah, he has had that shoulder issue for, I believe, well over a decade. Yeah. It's just probably magnified. Well, I haven't seen him, you know, he usually would kind of roll the shoulder a little bit, run the arm, you know, Looking circle the arm around a little bit. Yeah. I haven't seen him really do a lot of that here, so that's good. Now that you mention it, I agree. I haven't really seen it either, so maybe he's actually rectified that. Yeah, the four is close to a kiss shot. Everyone no, loves those. Is he looking at the one, Jeremy? Yeah. The ten goes. The ten goes. He killed the ball nicely. <clears throat> he meant to hit the three, I believe. Yeah, he's going to give him a, f a little bit of a free roll at this, maybe? The three? Yeah. I think so. I yeah. don't believe he's coming into the nine. I, he, it looks... Very free. He's just got to stay down, follow through, and have a little confidence. Yeah, not a huge stroke. Uh, if he really hit it, he might get into the nine, but I doubt that. Right. You just want to roll the this. Ten right? goes. Uh, the Twelve goes. I'm sorry. The twelve goes. So. I don't believe that's the shot, though. He's shooting the seven to come one row out. Yeah. And, uh, he's not going to get much. <clears throat> I don't believe that was the shot either. I agree. Jeremy. I agree. I don't, it just tells me he might not be thinking clearly. Is he going to run three rails in the stack here? Well, you got to be careful of that one. Hopefully he can get it into the catcher's mitt. And it's got to go. That's the problem with that. Oh, he fouled, I guess. No, I think he was just asking which ball you hit and the 15 it was. Okay. I think that's what it was. I think Kenny was just asking that he okay. hit the ball. And that's where you got to look around there because he could have cut the 11 towards his hole with the bridge and run the cue ball up into, you know, not to, to the hole to make it. <laughs> sure, just sure, near, just down to that side. Yeah, and run the cue ball all the way up table and let Efren shoot at the one. That's a lot less dangerous than leaving him these short shots. But, I mean, we'll see. And I don't mean that's the shot necessarily, but – Tony just needs to look around a little bit when a mistake happens, maybe. Yeah, I fully agree. I think the transition, though, and that's what makes the derby the derby, the transition. And for the folks at home, if you, if you don't understand how much uh, fatigue goes into play, the transition from rotation or nine ball to one pocket, anybody that's getting deep in these tournaments, like the master of the table and the running, which Tony's in the running for, Boy, these guys are, are moving through different games constantly. So to Jeremy's point, I think he's got to slow down, regroup, and, and, and understand he's playing one pocket here. This match this match is allowed to take some time. Yeah, for sure. What about the kick on the four, Jeremy? It's not terrible, I'll tell you what. Uh, you going the, upward with the ball. <clears throat> catch the top side of it, and you're good. Yeah, you could make it if you catch the eight thin enough. But with the top English, it will probably hit the short rail, but it's still the shot. Yeah. Oh, he didn't catch the eight, but that's still the shot. It's so. definitely the shot. Efren's in a, in a problem here, and 
Tony does owe a ball. So, so I believe there was a foul. There was a foul there then. I think he had moved when he was bridged over the balls. I think he had moved two balls. Ken Schumann doing his job like usual. He's forced uh, Efren to look up table. I don't know that I would be doing that. Would you uh, consider taking a foul under the four here? Or is it so I tough? probably would for sure. Now, he's got to make a hell of a bridge <clears throat> to get to it to be able to kick there, right? Right. But right. Well, look at this creative shot if he gets there. Yeah. Always a little scary moving balls. I don't know if he can get at anything really to shoot at, so it's a little temporary safety, I guess. I'm looking at the 13-2-15, and the 15 looks like it's possibly going off the three. At least move balls to your well, – Well, he can make the three, maybe even the five. But what future is there? Well, he must feel like he can get shape. Yeah. Oh, he had a different angle than what we were looking at or what I was looking at. Well struck there, right, Jeremy? Yeah, for sure. Last several times, or last couple times, uh, he's, I don't know. This is where he needs to look a little more, though, and see really how am I going to get more balls. Correct. Yeah, you, you, you really want to put some focus into that shot there. Well, it's kind of what I was about to talk about. That last couple times I, I did a match with Tony, Alex and Tony, the only real difference was. I did some of that with you. Yeah, the amount of balls that. That Tony was getting versus yeah, Alex. Yeah, he was getting a lot of shots. Absolutely He was right. producing shots, let's say that, but then really, really <clears throat> minimal runs for a guy of that speed. Yes, and I, I think it's just maybe a, a lack of effort or focus or intent in, into those position plays that you pointed out. Well, I think he gets ahead of himself sometimes. Like, he'll break balls out almost on the first shot a lot of times instead of getting the run started. Now he's going to have to spot one. This cue ball is going to be in pretty good jail. Yeah, is, effort a lot, is he able to still? Tony's asking why I owed one. Here's Ken Schumann. But that's what I was saying. I don't know if there was really a foul called earlier. I don't know exactly what happened. Or maybe, maybe Tony didn't realize what Kenny was asking him. Very possible. I thought Ken clarified that with him. That's what I thought had happened. Okay. Yeah. So you were right or I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think it <clears throat> seemed like to me the way Tony pointed at the 15 like, oh, I hit the 15. Efren might be okay with that ball not spotting anyways. No doubt about that. He can go low now. This could creep up. Yeah, well it struck. It definitely does a little bit. Now the two, pretty close to dead off the nine. Can't yeah, can quite get, get to, to it, it, but got to be close, though. But at the same time, Jeremy, the two is headed towards Efren's pocket as well. It looks like it's definitely going low, though. Mm -hmm. you can't quite see enough of the 13, if any, to shave it and come back on the stack. Tony will kick at the 13 sometimes in this spot, but uh -uh. Oof. I agree, though. I've seen him do it. That yeah. seven and six is, I mean, these balls are actually favoring effort in a lot of ways. I, I can't hate that because he really was kind of in a spot where he had to, I think there's something he could have done better. I might have left him parallel with the 15, just face on. Yeah, where he uh, just clips it, where he forces him to yeah, make he it. he can't move it really, right? Yeah. Now he can move it easy. Oh, he's putting him in the stack as well. Yeah. Nice shot. And I still say Ephraim's probably the best in the world around the stack. I've said this for years. He's he's on another level around the stack. His creativity and danger is un, just unparalleled. I think that's what made him the best in the Agreed. one pocket. Agreed. Yeah. I, I think you know the game better than he does. <clears throat> I know that sounds crazy for some people. Sure. That someone knows the game better than Ephraim. But the traditional side of the game. But when it comes to just pure talent and knowing how to do other things, he's just, you know, like Scott said, uh, another planet. Yeah, he, he does things that are just unconventional to anyone. He has his own style and his own way of getting there, and, and it's very special. I think he might play. I like the two. Uh, the two uh, off the nine doesn't he, look bad at all. No, and you could maybe even stick up in there between the 12 and 6. Yeah, or, or go forward. Or go forward. Oh, he hit. oh, he almost hit the point. 
Yeah, you yeah. kind of got away with two things there. But that type of shot right there, for instance, Scott, like how often are you shooting <clears throat> that shot? He's shooting it, in my opinion, because he doesn't want the balls to go up tables, what I feel like, at least not early without the lead. Oh, that's a great point. You know? That's so, a great point. Because that was an awkward shot, right, to s just send yes. a bare ball down. I mean, that not much to it there. Look at this, Swishola. And that's what Tony Choyan does. He, he comes with banks playing this game that, that are unconventional. Yeah, and on. kicks, right? He kicks playing the game one pocket as good as anybody he's I've a lot ever of, seen. He's real good at real first shots. So. Yes. Yeah, that's why I was going to look at the beard on the two, but there's just no position with what it. What do you mean the beard on the two? The carom off the nine? Or I the six? I think off the six, yeah. Oh, I like that. I don't know what else he can do offensively. The 13 doesn't look like it. Three rails, it looks like the six has got him covered up a could, little bit. Could you bank the six one rail and carry him at the That's same time? That's what I was thinking, maybe, yeah. Might be a little steep. Just a hair. But I, you know, here's another look at our two rail shot. A little jacked up as well. This is the Oof. best it's turned over all week. They've been kind of tightening up off the second rail, that one. Great call, and he just missed the 13. Yeah. Just missed it. Well, even whenever, you know, let's say Efren was a little younger, uh, and I played him in a lot of times, I felt like that he didn't want to play the long game. Now, maybe he didn't want to play that against me as much because I don't mind the long game. You know, Efren's no dummy as far as what he wants to do, right? But uh, I always felt like even back then he wanted to play it pretty aggressively, which why wouldn't he? Well, I'll, you know? I'll, I'll say with all due respect that, that that was the only way I ever found how to beat him. It, is to if I it, it, it was very difficult to get him up table on him to begin yeah, with, right? Yeah, He's yeah. so great at keeping the pressure on you down low, but if you could get them up table on him, you could you could tell pretty quickly that he didn't enjoy that. To your point, he he really kind of forced the issue. That was the only way I ever could find out how to beat him. Yeah, the most traditional one pocket is what I try to play, simple traditional exactly. one pocket. Exactly, and, and you're great at it, in my opinion, one of the best of all time at moving. Look at this ball shorten up, Jeremy. Yeah, he's going to surrender a bank for sure. But the, even right there, not a ton of cover. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Not, he sold out those balls, but what if the ball he banked went by? That could have been a bankable ball as well, the two-reller, you know, the yes. one he shot at. So it wasn't like, oh, he got unlucky to sell out there. It was just, uh, like I said, and probably pretty smart to play aggressive. I mean, why not? Oh, Ooh, my geez. goodness. Is that because he didn't stroke the ball? The cue ball didn't go through? The six much? You know what he I mean? He didn't it, put any inside on it, did he? It didn't but look did it like need it. inside or did I, it need I don't strength? know. Yeah. It didn't look like it did. I'd like to see that. I thought the angle was just kind of like perfect. So did I. Oh. It's interesting. If he gets an angle here. Yeah, I don't believe he did, but it's, I think he's got the wrong angle. Does the seven bank? from if he just I don't over? believe so, Jeremy. I think he's too thin on it. All right, ball count four to two, huge game. You can see that. Yeah, that that was massive. And to your point, it would have been nice to see that again. I don't know if if uh, Tony just didn't f go through the ball on that cross bank, or if it was laying funnier than we gave it credit. Yeah, when the when the banks are a little close, if you let, it's almost like some two railers off the side rail end rail. If when you don't stroke the ball, they'll catch a kiss more. But when you go through the ball. The cue ball will get by it quicker. Oh, that one really spread. It really did spread. And I was about to say, it seems Ooh. like Efren has this bank down. But if anybody can put this bank down, it's the guy that's getting ready to shoot it. He's got to warp it, though, right? Or not warp it, but he's got to shoot it with pace. I don't <coughs> think he can follow across this one. It looks pretty natural, Jeremy. Oh, uh, really? Well, that would be the way you'd want to shoot it. i got to believe this is going to go high. Oh, he got a lot of that ball. He got wow. too much, so it was close to natural. No, but, it was natural. That was very good. But but <laughs> he might have been better off doing what you said, warping it. I guess he got too much, but that's why he didn't quite get to the seven, right? Yeah, because okay. he caught a. He was worried about. I think maybe you know he recognizes the table. You can't play it high at a light speed. It's got to got to be into the low rail a little bit. Now, here is just no miss. 
uh, you know, whatever you do, that doesn't mean cinch it, but just whatever you do with the cue ball, you yeah. just no miss. Even just go into the oh, five. Oh, 13 goes. He's going three rails for oh, the seven. Oh, it does go. Yeah. Or two rails for we're, the seven. We're a little misled there. It definitely didn't look like it went to us. Yeah, now playing for two. Well, that was a big turnaround. Uh, nice well stroke well there. Struck there. Very clean. Tony likes these banks, but boy, on this table it's tough. Though I'm talking about the two railer on the 14, or the 10, excuse me. He's really good at the speed of these banks. Look at that ball open up. Yeah, that. Uh talk about Tony all the time that he opens up the door on certain banks usually because of his ball speed so good uh, he'll leave you some shots here and there from the end rail that aren't that bad but there's a ton of pressure on him it seems like all the time because he's got a ball in front of the pocket yeah he's one of the best at it he didn't leave a bank here did he he's looking at he can't quite he can't quite shoot it either way without selling out you can't play the 14 to where the 5 2 rails. You can't play the 14 to where the 5 1 rails. He's going to give up the cue ball both ways. All right, just I a like little that. cross on the 2 here to your side and straight back down. Either one. The 10's okay too. I guess you could cross that and go between the 2 1 as well. Yeah, back I think down. that's a little more dangerous. I like your shot more. I think the 10's harder to bank if you cross the two to your side i think if you mess with the 10 here you've got to protect that deuce yeah well that's okay if you play it like that okay didn't give up the two railer somehow might have gave up the 10 two railer though uh, going by the five i don't know the five though i mean i guess can he not get it across the five and get behind the one yeah i believe he can that's why i would have probably went back down table not only that, leaving your opponent closer to the balls. Yeah. And you got him over the trees, in the trees a little bit. Yes, he did just a little bit. There's a gap there. Tony shouldn't entertain this bank. Really. No I mean. chance he should entertain it. He should be playing the five up towards the two and just take your medicine and let Ephraim go at the ten. You don't want to bring this in play. This is a ball that's not in play. Whether it makes it beauty. Not. It beautiful. Beautiful. Jeez. Center cut one to one here in the semifinal of the 2023 one yeah. pocket division. And I guess we go back to that, and I'm, I'm going to correct myself. Uh, I exaggerated a little bit more than you did. I guess if you feel great about the shot and you're over the ball, the, you're, the player is the only one that can really make that decision, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying, most times guys would just like. <laughs> you or I are yeah. shooting that. Well, this is tournament pool. You can't get things back, right? Right. So. I think that's why Alex has always been such a great tournament player playing one pocket. Is the guy just shoots the right shot. Such a high percentage. Oh, well, these balls came out a little bit open and the cue ball low, so Tony's going to have some options. Yeah, there's a big opening for Tony here. He could cross the 9 and play the Q1-1 rail up behind the 15. He could play the 9 into the 4. This is where you take your time and look at your options, right, Jeremy? He's yeah. got so many. He can even 2-rail the 4 into the balls. Yeah, there's a ton of options here. Uh, definitely probably something on the 9, but well, he does have a perfect look. You do see the, the 4, right? Oh, yeah. He's got a perfect look. and He's got a blocker with the 12 or, or the 13. He doesn't have to shoot the nine. You know what I'm talking about here. The two rail into the five? Yeah, the five cuts pretty nice off the edge. I think he really wants to play a little more cue ball, though. All right. Okay, he did try and get him up under the 15. It's not terrible. Yeah. Can Efren go up table here, pointing the 13 into the four? I think that's what he's going to do. I don't know if really uh, what the right shot is just yet. Looks like he could come off the five and get to the rail and kick the three away. It's a little touchy, but he could definitely scramble the balls a little bit with the nine, maybe. I don't know. I think he could almost do the same thing coming off the 13, going into the back of the three. It's a little steep. Yeah, he's got to elevate, though, to do it. Right. right. Well, he's hitting on the right side, so he's going to try and, like, double kiss it, maybe. Oh. Wow. Oh, and oh. made the five. 
Jeez, but I bet he the, had a clue on that too. I bet he did as well. But look at the pressure he's applied on Tony, just off ball in hand, right? Here comes the ball to spot that covers the fourteen up, Jeremy. And it covers the six as well. And I think so, Tony's got to shoot, though. I mean, I agree. What do you do? Do you play it in a way that you split the deuce in fifteen with the cue ball, or do you just go nah, all out not here? Me, I don't think so. I mean, it's not terrible. Don't get me wrong. It is a tournament pool. It's not a bad decision if you want to do that. I guess you just go straight towards the four. Yeah, I want to make the ball here, right? The eight Correct. goes, the seven <clears throat> goes. I mean, there's I don't have to move it much to get a nice shot. This is a lot of pressure, though. Oh, oh, hit nice it well. stroke. You nice hit stroke. Very well. Here's a replay here, and I think definitely the five was in mind. Oof. Yeah, just the new felt. It kind of hooked a little bit early and then kind of ran off the off the three ball. Yeah, I don't believe. I uh oh, work. uh oh, he got <sighs> lucky there. Did he get but a shot? But that's kind of what I meant about his running the balls when I watched Alex. Like right there, why you move the ball so much? You even take a chance. You got the eight goes, the seven goes. You got all these balls that go. Yeah, and I see him do it over and over as well. It's it, he just seems to get a little ahead of himself, like you said, Jeremy. I Watch feel, Alex. I Alex feel like it's a little careless. Yeah, and Alex just will not flinch. There, there, there's just no room for error with Alex. He's going to make sure he gets where he's got to get, and he knows how important each shot is. To your point, he does get ahead of himself. I, I call it a little careless. Either either one or both at the same time, he does do that a lot. Yeah, I think once he just simplifies looking at the next ball, because it's like this. <clears throat> Great players are going to play shape. They're not going to do things that dumb uh, if, as long as you're not doing too much. And it's, it's just even, how it is. You know? It is how it is. And it's even more credit to his game. I mean, he does so good, <laughs> and he has some, some pretty visible flaws in his game at times and, and still wins almost everything he plays. Yeah, it was big upside, and, and uh, now he can free bank this a little bit, yeah. I think. I don't know if I draw this, though. It looks like I'm going to the 12. Oh, I see what he did. He caught that ball coming out. Beautiful bank there. Tony doesn't mind the quick ones either, folks. Is Tony playing for one here? But, like, you were a great ball runner as well. I thought Scott, one of the best. Um, and it's it's not like get the ones you can all the time. But you know what I mean. Like, don't get yourself cut off early, right? So For sure. I th I <laughs> beautiful out there, though. I hate to say what ball is most important, but, but your leadoff into the run is definitely most important, right? Yeah, the first, yeah. second, third ball, right? You want to get down what you have to get down, and then if you have to stop and reevaluate, Tony's taking a break. Oh, well, maybe not. You know? and, well, it's almost like straight pool. Um, I've learned about straight pool. I was lucky enough to be around Jimmy Karras and Oh, I try really? to re, re break the balls open way too quick, and he's like, "Man, you're gonna you're gonna re break the balls when you need to get the run started. Run some balls. Don't worry about the stack so much." And Same I, thing with one pocket. I think a lot of times I've noticed that about great straight pool players, where I would think they're wanting to open every ball, and they're picking them off, picking them off until yeah. they really have the right opportunity. Yeah, and then they just rub them, and then yeah. they just rub or, yeah. or open one ball and then yeah, open another ball. And there's different guys that do it differently, right? Sure. Now Thorson always smashes them open, and he's a great straight pool player. Right. So. I'll tell you, if he could get the five, I wouldn't doubt he went for it, but oh, he can't get to it. I'm a huge fan of this. I do this a lot. I learned it from Cliff Joyner, who who didn't utilize it enough, but taking a – Taking a foul up into the, the corner. corner. Yeah. What you do there is you force your opponent to come down, right? right. It reverses the game and puts pressure on your opponent. Really doubled up there. I'm talking about the 13 and 7. So if you get that cue ball up in the corner. I think he's a little worried about the 10 with Tony. Just, you know, he might cut the 10 from up there. I get but that. But there is a lot of value in that <laughs> shot a lot. I mean, that is like, it's almost like there's so many things you can do every time you're at the table. I was taught, you know, you can make the ball oh, for your opponent. You could take a foul. But th that's one of the things you can always do getting out of the break is that corner rollout. Even if you're leaving them the straight in on yes. the other ball. Yes, so. yes. All right, not a shot you see very often, but he didn't like his position. How yeah. often you see the cue ball there after the break <laughs> shot? You, you just don't. It really doesn't right. happen. This table plays well for this tightening up, going at the seven. Oh, this is going at the seven. This is going to be close, I can tell you that. Yeah, we may see Efren Reyes go at the three here. It is, bank it is bankable. 
Ooh, it is Jeremy. The two goes, I think. I, I, I believe you're right. I believe we will see him go at it, especially alluding to your points earlier, as he wants to keep this game going. The ten goes. I think the ten goes by the two. If, Maybe not. If not, the two goes, I believe. Yeah, if he can hold his ball between the 12 and 10. Now let's look around just in case. He can come off the three and put him behind the seven easily. I'm looking right down the line. Oh, absolutely he can. Just has to hit heavy ball. Yeah, that, but that's a pretty easy shot overall. You know, I think he's just Actually, sizing up the bank myself. Yeah, I think this is percentages. I couldn't fault him for banking it, but this table does bank a little tough. Yeah. And I don't he's know. Going. That, here he goes. Well, he didn't make it look tough, and I think he split the window. Does he have a shot on oh, the two? Yeah. He's got the two, and this is where he made his name in this great game of one pocket is uh, getting a lot of balls from situations like this. So was that an error on Chohan's? Uh, no, maybe just not getting the cue ball the rail. I mean, those balls, that ball ran into that ball. You know what I mean? So it kind of repositioned it, in a place it. to where, you know, you can't yeah. always figure out everything, right? That's a good so. point. So what, what's he got here, Jeremy? He's got an angle to go into the 6 and 8. Does he just yeah. hold and, and, and play the 14, or do you – oh, he's drawn for the 10. Yeah. Ooh, a little flinch there. A little flinch there. Yeah, he's not pausing at the cue ball like he normally does, which he has the most unique pause. He doesn't pause and then swing. He pauses, and then he pumps one more time and swings. Watch. See that pause? And then he pumps and goes. But Ooh. when he doesn't have his pause, seems like he gets a little off with his timing a little bit, just like all of us. I believe he's got five, I thought, maybe. Yeah, I believe he's got five. No, he's got four. You're right. He's got, he's got four. There's 11 on the table. 11 on the table. Can he pocket this 14? Uh, or is it the 10? Well, someone in the crowd was kind of making a, a noise like he had overran when the ball was rolling up. But don't think he wouldn't swerve this or maybe go three rails to get on the four. And the 11, 111 off the nine might be all right, too. Well, he had to... S well, there, there's <coughs> something in the stack he likes, is all well, I can tell you. Is it the one? Is he looking across the four here? Yeah, and pump no way. Oh, he's, he's just look at clear this. Him out. He said, "I got to get to the hill as well. Let's go up table." This is yeah. a, this is a time in the tournament where I'm going to expend some energy. Well, like we talked about earlier, when he gets a little lead, yep, they don't mind him going up table <clears throat> a little bit. And he knows his opponent as well, and his opponent's going to stay aggressive. You can bet on that, especially in this situation. This is where if I don't like anything else, I just take the one the foul into the eleven and just kind of massage the balls a little bit because he's gonna give you something you and more are, than you would think, anyways. Agreed. You and I are the same in that thought process, but there are very few great players that'll take a four to nothing, five to nothing ball lead and, and take a foul. Right. And I'd be surprised if he's one of them. They just don't do it. But what's the difference, right? You're down five to nothing. Yeah. Better, better it's your all position. about percentages. Better your position. You know, you need an eight and nine, no, not much difference. You know, the time you're not wanting to take a foul is when you need one or two. And, and really, to Jeremy's point, now Efren's going to get at least one, if not two, balls out of play for Tony. I uh, didn't get him really that out of play, so now the four is probably coming down. And this is where I just repositioned the four on the bottom rail, trying <laughs> to use the stack and the seven well, to block it. I, I agree. The eight's with that. close, by the way. Look at the six and two rail and eleven at the same time. Yeah, is that right. Available. The six is going to go a little deep, you know, towards Efren's pocket and then over. It's, it, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. You got to cut it quite a bit to get the action it on is. that. But the eleven might be uh, pretty close. Yeah, but I think the six is the most important on that shot. To your point, I think it's going too deep. I don't think you push that situation. I like the four as well, Jeremy playing pretty much all cue ball, right? Yeah. If you feel comfortable with it anyways. There's nothing really wrong with coming off the 12 either, but I think this is it. You're just playing. Play. Hmm. That's okay. It's not terrible. No. The reason that that's okay is that he's forcing Efren to come down table off of something. Similar to the foul I was discussing at the beginning of the break, uh, the break shot this game. 
anytime you're forcing your opponent to come down table off of a ball, when you are leading, it puts a little pressure on you. Well, he certainly doesn't want to come off the pile here because you never know exactly. how the balls are going to end up when you come off of the pile. And so he's shaving the seven maybe lightly or something like that. Uh-oh. Uh well, this oh. could be a big error here. This I'm, could be a tournament cost. Well, the 13's error. dead too. The 113 or 9 or whatever it is, that's dead as a doornail. <clears throat> I can see it from up here. He, if he can cut the 8 in, the, he can get on that ball. And the 15 goes. Well, he, this is to your point. This is where he needs to take some time and recognize the position he's in. Well, he's gotten there, Jeremy. Well, the one thing is I, hard for me to believe Efren didn't notice that 8, how it would push out. Because he was going into the stack there with the cue ball, you know. I don't know if this ball was wired, Jeremy. I think he'd have done already shot it. He wanted to get above the 15 was the problem there. Well, he can hit the top of the one, I think, and make that ball with no problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if that's the case, I think I would have shot that now. Me too. Because yeah. he doesn't need a whole lot of throw. And right. then you got the 15 laying. Exactly. You're guaranteed to get a shot on that ball next. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to manufacture a shot next. Well, yeah. not only that, with the 15 there, he didn't have to hit it very hard to, and, and maybe push that many balls towards Efren's pocket either. You know right, what I mean? just like, snatch back a few inches. Right. Now he's got a – I think he still has the 1, the 11. I'd worry about the 7. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, oh, wow. that's kind of chilly right there. I mean, that was yeah. the match. But that's kind of the point of getting on the 15 first from the first shot, right? I totally and leaving agree. the 15 I, I because totally then agree. the 15 wouldn't have been moving, right? I so. totally agree. I would He's got to shoot this, though, and, and I think he can <clears throat> follow his ball one rail over, right? Well, I am looking at I'm looking at the 6-1. It's laying really nice. Now, the problem with the 6-1, the problem with the 6-1 is that the 6 is coming back if he misses it. This is the right shot, though, because he's got a bigger pocket a little bit, too. Where's your cue ball going? You're splitting just, the 12, 13? Just high ball. Yeah, just high ball. I don't think you're going to have too oh, much it problem. Well. Yeah. It, it rolled oh, up on him, it rolled by the up. Way. It rolled up on him. Well, he kind of got double jeopardy there. Uh, he gets, but, but to your point, to my point, I think you shoot the combo before you shoot that stripe. Going yeah. back early, and, and, and to your point, way early on, is that he seems to get himself in some of these jams when he starts running the balls. But here we are. Yeah, what's he do here? I'm trying to think what the shot is here. If you Could you kick behind the one and double kiss the 11 in and just kind of smooth the one over to the rail, Scott? I like it. You know what I'm saying, to cover up the bank? Oh, wow. What? Yeah, he was in a pickle there. He was trying to cut, make the 11 and let the one cut what? cut a little bit. The only problem he had, was he going into the six with the cue ball? Trying to have the one come over, bleed the one over, That's go into the six with the cue ball? probably what happened before the kiss occurred. Yeah. I thought he could ticky behind it possibly and make the 11. Maybe the 11 was out too far for that. Look at this shot. I thought Tony's, he could for sure. Tony's playing. But double kiss the 11. You, I mean, it could go wrong. You might follow it in. But it's so tight that the tables are playing yeah, tight. Yeah, you figure yeah. a double kiss in, right? Correct. Right. I, I don't know quite what, what that was there, though, unless he was thinking about the table roll. Yeah, well, he's played roll the table Watch, roll see there. It, see it? Yeah. Wow. Now Tony playing for three, both guys. Just straight across. Stay off the rail with the cue ball. Oh, he went three rounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty well, but he doesn't want to get straight. And he did. Yeah, he can draw Just above, though, for Tony choices. For one? Three. Two, two, two. Or two. Okay. He's got choices with the 12, 13. I don't know. Uh, he's a little short, there. right, Jeremy? Oh, no, he's good. The, Look at this ball. No, the beds are playing nice here. We're unfortunately going to lose Efren Reyes, ladies and gentlemen, but we got another guy that's that's been making a hell of a lot of noise the last 10 years in this one pocket, and now a chance to get his first banner here at the Derby City Classic. I, I don't know if they're cheering more for Efren for uh, taking third or for Tony winning the match, but either way, it was a great match, and it looked like Efren was going to be the guy. Yeah. And here come Tony with, uh, you know, with, with the firepower. 
I think I think what he's done here this week is what's keep coming back. I know he makes these trips around for the exhibitions and stuff, but I think he wanted to make some more noise here at the Derby, that being Efren, and he sure did. And he definitely did, Jeremy, and it's been an honor uh, doing this with you, and thank you to AccuStats. You can That's close right. it out, my friend. AccuStats production, Jeremy Jones and Scott Frost. Thanks, thanks very much. The final coming up soon. Pay attention for the time. It won't be long.